six regenerated uh, Sterling motor plates cut today. And these are the first of our prototypes. I've hand cut these and machined these to make sure that they were correct before I actually uh, had the water jet guy cut them. Uh, on the top, I'll explain this. We have eight quarter inch bolts which will fasten all these plates together with uh, gasket O-rings, Viton, between each. We have eight bolts. We have air in on each side. We have water in and out on each side. In the center, we will have the beta configuration. And on these sides, we have our 608 bearings going in the top of these large quarter-inch stanchions uh, to hold the crankshaft at the top here. Already working on the crankshaft, and we have uh, the uh, the CAD work to uh, finish, but it's all going to work with the beta configuration. Now, with this top, which is half inch aluminum, it will go on top of this plate, which is a quarter inch, and focuses the air out of the barrel, which is 33 millimeters, uh, the bore of the displacer. Focus that air across each side so that we have this fitting in to that quarter inch hole. Now if you look at this, we have air coming from here and here for PSI gauge or for um, a Schrader valve to pressurize this unit. We have water in and water out and we have the, the gantry stanchions blocked off there so they will be sealed. Now if I can flip this over, you can see here the air is going to be focused outwards. So when that's focused outwards, we have a little bit of dead space in here that we could add a little bit of uh, regenerative material if we could keep it from falling into the bore of the actual displacer. We're going to be cutting these in 132nd or 40 thou aluminum. Now this fits down on top probably showing you guys a bit too much already, but <laughs> it's all for fun. We're going to put this on top, and we basically have a void in here now where that air is going to rush by this hole as well as into these two cavities towards the top of the motor so that we can fill it and we can test it and we can add our water in and out. Now, with this, we have the water entering on the bottom here and here. We want to be able to focus that water around the jacket of the engine. So with the motor running, we'll have water filling this 10 millimeter hole here. We have an O-ring for here, which is high heat fight on, good to 700 degrees, probably unneeded. And then we're going to be putting another plate on. Opposite these holes, we will have these holes. Another water jacket now will cover this area and this area. These two areas will complete the circuit around the uh, bore of the piston for the displacer. I don't have the rest of the plates with me, but we'll have another half inch on top and then a base plate. This base plate will have a seat of five millimeters here, and then the stainless steel will be inserted from the inside out sticking out this area with a two millimeter well and that will fit on top so that it's sandwiched in between this steel plate and the last steel plate there. Now this hot cap can be sealed with an o-ring underneath and we will have the hot cap extending at about 66 millimeters this side. Now it's really becoming a larger engine as you can see. This will be the complete cold end of the motor. And with that, we will be able to keep temperatures extremely low, especially with the, the water if it's turned on to a tap or something like that in the house. Even without the water, the amount of aluminum and steel, uh, as well as carbon fiber uh, MBR gaskets, which will seal all these chambers, uh, basically will insulate the heat from the hot cap, which will be stainless, the only part that will be stainless. Now on top, as I was saying, we have a 608 bearing here. We're going to have this uh, attached. We're going to TIG weld along this side and this side to create a, a straight angle. We'll make it true. And then we're going to add the flywheels, which I've cut out of half-inch aluminum as well, 
and they will spin on the outside with the crankshaft falling between two of these posts in between. <sighs> a lot of work. Uh, it should turn out to be a great motor. I've already uh, done a lot of the uh, simulation tests, and uh, the construction of it, I'm hoping, will be so durable that students will be able to take it apart for years and years uh, and reuse it rather than have be a fixed uh, sterling motor, which is uh, not really that easily examined and uh, experimented with. With this design, uh, people will be able to add plates and reduce plates uh, as well as it change the attack of the crankshaft.